One of my biggest <laughs> concerns with the podcast space in South Africa is the fact that we're kind of losing the essence. Oh, I'm supposed to be closer to the mic. Yeah. We're kind of losing the essence of what podcasting was supposed to be. And it it breaks my heart. Not really a purist. Yeah. I'm not really a purist, but the whole reason I'd like to think podcasting blew up was because it allowed people a long format way of conversing about anything and discussing some of the more politically incorrect things about life. Sure. So some of the things we're thinking about uh, that we discuss, let's put it, the things you discuss in a WhatsApp group when you're alone with your mates, that's uh. what this space was meant to be for. And sadly, outside of being told by a company, you, go to, you can't say that, you must say this, deja, you know, like a, a news platform when they're having interviews, they're being told with business. So that's the whole thing. And you know, as we grow and as your profile grows, and it's one of the things that's said in me, um, you find that you have to censor yourself because people are like, hey, bro, you realize you're influential and mm. what you said hurt this person and it made a newspaper. So I'm hoping that today's episode, the pen and pen, uh, we're going to go a bit more raw. <laughs> Shai schooner. Mm. Uh, with this guy, Upenson. And as you guys know, we always have the celebratory, oh. introductory, oh. gay handshake. Get ready for it. <laughs> you know the way you laugh every time? It's like, I think we need to do it again. Uh-uh. No, what do you mean? The thing is, you like it. No, we have to do it again. It's that, it's that intimate. No, it's right. We've done it. I think I used to hold your hand when you were still, when I was at Busy B. Yeah. In standard one, and you were in crash. Yeah. Did we not hold hands walking home? You remember yeah. we used to hold sticks. Yeah, we used Quite to. this thing we had of sticks where you and push it in the, the sand, and, and it, it looks like it's racing. Yeah, and then it. But we never held hands going home. That's that's. Ugh. Shout yeah. out to Andrew and Tristan Tate. Um, oh snap. They yeah, are. I wonder if we'd be able to take them on in terms of physical. But obviously, I'll take Tristan. Because it looks like he's a bit puppish. Yes, yes. Those guys will You'd kick have to our take heads Andrew. off. Yo, yo, yo. Tristan's also kick? a fighter. Yeah, yo, yo. Have you seen them kick? The kickboxing stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we club to and just wrestling shy in the pants. To be, to be pretty dope if we could sit with them. Yeah, no, the amazing guys. Everyone, so top G's. The the first thing I want to speak about is segmenting black people. Okay. Um. My Twitter in the past three weeks has been hell on yeah. earth for me. Um, and I'm sure the trolls are going to love this so much because mm. the, the one thing about Twitter is people realized that Twitter is the closest form of affecting a celebrity. Yeah. On Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube, they still fall. But once you realize that you can swear at a celebrity and they can respond back, mm. that drove people in, insane. Yeah. I have three followers. I don't even have a profile picture, but I go in and I accuse someone of something and they respond back and they respond with emotion. Fuck you. You don't know what you... It's like, oh shit. Oh, I've got to. I actually have the I, power to I influence got to. Got an to. influential person. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. since people realize that, I think the, the worst of human beings has come out on Twitter. And I, I don't know what Elon Musk is doing with the algorithms, but I'm not enjoying it. Yeah. I did an interview with Bianca Costa around the fact that Chris Excel that fucking puss refuses to remove her, her picture. Mm. Um, and then Nota went and he jumped on and he decided to also fucking shit on my, on my Twitter, mm. which kind of annoyed me. And I've tried to keep my distance because like I said, you try to move politically correctly and be sure. okay. And sure, you know, sure, sure. and obviously I went back to Ayla Masima because <laughs> we haven't beaten up anyone or hurt anyone like on a serious note because mm. we're peaceful guys. Yo, we're, we're nice just, blokes. We're just uh, loving, loving folks. But all their trolls and their mobs, the biggest retards on, on Twitter, the biggest idiots and imbeciles, mm. and some of the worst type of black people in South Africa are there. Mm. Fucking jumping on Amasimba and shitting on my page and talking shit about me. And it, it sucks. And what's bored me the most is I block people on a daily basis. Mm. 20, 30. It's tiring. But I have to do it because I have a very thick skin but, and some people are like, don't block them, ignore. I can ignore them, but I, other people can't. Yeah. 
other people will then engage them and engage make it a and, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if I've I block seen, them, seen, then they kind yeah. of disappear because they yeah. don't see my content and it minimizes. Yeah. yeah. My point is, I I said this on Twitter, but they create another fake account just so that they can keep you keep blocking. Yo, it's tiring. Block the motherfuckers. It's tiring. It's tiring. Yeah. In in life, if you want to have peace, if you want to have inner peace, yeah, move away from bad places. I know a lot of people believe in leaving Ikasi. And I've always been like, but I love Vikas. And they're like, hey, pen for you to the mindset of one person cars if it's they'll drag you down. They want to do this. When your life is moving forward, but you know. Um, if you're on social media and you're like, why am I always miserable? I started, I started unfollowing celebrities. Yeah. Great celebrities living the best lives. Mm. Because they made me feel some type of way. Sure, sure, sure. And maybe it was jealousy. Maybe it was jealousy and it envy. Could be, yeah. But all I know is I wasn't feeling lacquer. So I unfollowed them and I started following the pages that inspire me, sure. educate me, mm. etc. Yo, I unfollow him. Proper. So you move away. Yeah. I... Uh, going on a tangent. Bring it back to Twitter. About a month or two ago, I said on Twitter, and this went slightly viral. One of the worst things about social media, or in school, we were separated by sort of intelligence. Mm. And... One of the worst things about social media is we're all bunched together. Mm. So you're there with the slowest kids, the dumbest we kids, do. the rapists, the murderers, mm. Mm. the people that enjoy f- causing other people's depression and misery. Mm. Um, the blocking is the one way. Now, in the two weeks of hell that I've I've had on Twitter, mm. and I, I say hell lightly. I mean, guys, uh, these things actually just roll off my back. I was like, we need to segment black people. I've said it before and it's triggered people before, but mm. I am, it's it's growing inside me. Let me just jump in with the segmenting before we go back to Twitter. Are you good, bro? You can please greet the people out oh, there. Oh, hey, Sunburn and Sunburn and guys, hope everyone is well. Uh, let me do these bad boys, yeah. He's good tea. Aibo, T1. 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 Can't you suppose this like from this loot? You've been hanging out with DJ Spoo. What a steal you have flop. Just bongo cut. I go and look at mean code. Yeah, scrub it. Um, you created a bashal. So I'm gonna bashal. I did. Okay, I did. Um, the segmenting plex and how they get triggered, which is weird. I don't understand why they get triggered because we already segmented. You know, even even Elokshin, as it we are so wet. So wet. So is Zola. All these places are segmented with different tribes, with different socioeconomic uh, classes. You look at certain places, Esoweto, Deep Kloof. It's not the same as if you go to Esoweto, Eglamin. They've segmented, you know, based on finances, whatever the case may be. Zulu people from Pedis to what, 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 what. We've been segmented in language, in finances. So when you say it, I don't understand why guys get so touched, you know. Like, Ntanga, it's already existed way before you even thought of that idea. So, oh, excuse me, guys. Way before, <laughs> way before you even thought of that, it's already been segmented. Uh, guys, I'm distracted. Sorry, the crew is, is distracting. Yeah. You know, so, um, again, it's been there. And the problem comes in at the fact that when you say it, you know, let's take it back to Twitter. You posted something about Mrs. Miss South Africa. Now you can be married and have a child. What, what? And then you quoted what was written in the article, in quotations. Ne? Around um, we are right going in the we had a transgender before. Now we are going in the right direction. You quoted that. I want to say so. When a penwell, you think this is the right direction? Why penwell? He says this is the right direction. I'm like, I don't don't understand quoting part of an article. You are literally just highlighting that so that people can say well, that's within the article. What I need to do is I need to then click on the article, read the motherfucking article, and then I have an opinion now, you know, because you weren't putting your opinion. You were just saying this, 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 quote, ah. And I'm like, as I'm busy, dumb. Sing out in our corner, Twitter's dumb. Dumb Twitter and smart Twitter. Dumb Twitter. No, and then normal Twitter, where the bulk of the people will be. And then we're going to eat Twitter. The bulk of me. the people will be in dumb Twitter. Is it? 
It's a fact. Yeah. Okay. We be kona dumb dumb Twitter. Yeah. We be kona normal Twitter partner dao. We be kona ne ne Twitter for abantu. Hey, ngoba ngempela nje uzubuz uzoti. Dumb Twitter lona. A a a ifunda. Uzi so abantu so pala nje tweet em nandi. Upegi comment e umchita mai pendu. And I'm like, bro, you didn't even bother reading this. It's really and, sad, bro. Yeah, no, yo, yo, yo. No, so the history of this me. country, of course, holds that we were colonized. Uh, we've been under apartheid, and black people suffered the some of the worst atrocities historically. Killed, jailed, exploited labor, had land <laughs> taken from them, which is another thing that upsets people. Yeah. Um, and to this day, we haven't recovered as a people. Yeah. Um, I have tried in my life over time to try and see if I can add my little two cents in advancing the nation of black people. I set up the Buy Black Movement. I've read up all the stories. I've, I've done initiatives. I've done charity work. So I have an idea of the trauma and the mental issues. Now, at some point in my life, I decided, or let me not say I decided, I realized that we are not the same sure. as black people. Mm. And even historically, we were never the same. In fact. We speak about unity during apartheid, but we were not united. No. Realistically. And this is now education for people that don't know. There was a common understanding that apartheid was wrong because it was oppressing all black people. I say all in inverted commas because the king of the Zulus and many other black people lived well. Their mm. lives were not affected. They still were wealthy. Mm. They may not have been able to go into the mainstream economy and those things, but they lived very comfortably. Mm. But for the rest of us, so we had a common enemy, so to speak. Mm. But even in that, you had the ANC, you had the PAC, you had the IFP. You had black people that believed white people should be killed. You had black people that believed white people should go back to Europe. You had black people that wanted to live with white people. People like Bantu Bigo and Robert Sobugwe were saying black people must determine, must have self-determination, mm. which is what the Black Panther movement was about, which mm. is we want to have our own space. It was a form of apartheid. Leave us to our own devices. We had the Bantu stands at some point. Now, I was, I was thinking maybe yesterday that the idea that Blacks have ever been united is as misleading as saying South Africans are united because we have a common enemy when the Springboks play New Zealand. Mm. We may all agree we want the Springboks to win. But number one, there are many South Africans that aren't on the side of the Springboks. Mm. There are many South Africans that are just happy for that game. Mm. But after the game, we're not united anymore. We want apartheid to end, but I don't like you. Yeah. I don't yeah. like you. You're from Limpopo. I'm from the Western Cape. I don't like you. And we pretend. Mm. And what saddens me is... Down. Come on. Yeah, our, when are all those... our, our political parties have ridden this myth of black unity and it keeps many black people stuck. It's like waiting for Jesus to come back. Yeah. You're kind of stuck in this thing of black people will be liberated as soon as they, they unite. There are black we've people, done that before. There are black people from apartheid that to this day were not united and they focused on winning. And they won. And they're living well today. They're rich. They have land. They have game farms. They have commercial farms. Mm. They have a lot of cars. They travel overseas. Their kids go to the most expensive schools. They black. Then you've got black people that live in squatter camps that are poor, that are struggling, don't have access to good education, mm. that are sick. And you have this idea of we must be united. So... Sorry, let's take away borders. Like, listen to this fucking reason. Listen to this fucking reason. So, let's take away borders between African countries. Okay, sharp. Meanwhile, the fucker lives in a gated community. He stays behind high walls. So yeah, now him and his family are protected by high walls, security guards all the time. But then when it comes to the greater South African family, he's saying, remove the walls. Give me that mindset. And you have so many people that are agreeing with that mindset. And I'm going, can he start at home first? Can he demolish his walls and says, look, my space is everybody's space. We are brothers. We are sisters. Start so it's one with, oh, that's, that's, that's a real leader. He's leading from the front. You know, give me that mindset. I'm like, there's a reason you fucking put a wall around your home. 
I would assume. There's a reason why you have security. There's a reason why you stay in a gated community. There's a reason. There's a reason why we have border fucking fences. There's a reason why at every border gate, people get searched and there's soldiers patrolling. So give me, when I listen to these people, I'm like, you are preaching an ideology that you yourself are not living and give me young bula lalentole. Like, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I want to get as far away as possible from some of those people. So as I get older and as I say the things I say and as my mind sort of consolidates my thoughts, sure. more and more I get called a sellout, sure. which I understand. From a certain narrative, it makes sense. Mm. And it's from this fake black unity thing. Sure, sure. I I... I don't even know what I'm trying to say. I think I'm actually so annoyed. I I actually think if we were to segment black people, it would be the greatest thing for black people. So I may be coming from a place of frustration, but it's it's actually, I believe, one of the best solutions. White people. Mm. So let's go to white people, mm. of which a lot of them would also be a part of dumb Twitter, by the way. Mm. A lot of white people, the majority of white people, in my opinion, are racists. Mm. And I want nothing to do with them. White people are segmented. They don't speak about it, but they almost understand. What I mean by that is Johan Rupert, Christo Visa, Yanni Muton, Kurs Becker, and those guys, they, they are billionaires. Their concern is not with the poorest white people in Prakpan and yeah. other poor white areas. Yeah. They don't care about white beggars. They don't care about white people living in caravans that are poor and struggling. Then there are white people who are middle class, who work for these companies of these guys. And those people are like, look, I'm middle class. Mm. I'm just going to work and it's okay. Yeah. Understanding and segmenting, what it will do is it will push certain black groupings together so that they can focus on building businesses, becoming wealthy and creating spaces so that the hardworking middle class black population can, can work and be okay. And then isolate away from the poorest, laziest, most entitled people who refuse to put their hands up and work. But I look, don't know give, how give, else to explain it, give, but... Give me... I'll, I'll try. This is a fucking no-brainer in terms of segmenting or take school sports. You have under 13A, under 13B, C, D, E. There's a reason. There's a reason why you do that. And you put certain coaches depending on the level of the child. We love all of you, Santan, you know. But I know, Guti, this guy is playing under 13E cricket. So I'm not going to have the fastest bowler at the school bowling or put him in a rugby team and then mix them up. Because let him work towards the A. There's always those steps. It's the same academically. If you look at so many schools, the schools that I taught at at least, with the maths, You'd have A set, second set, whatever, up until D set, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. the, the D set for the guys that struggled the most with maths was always the smallest class. So you'd have your teacher and you'd have like a, a, another intern and a therapist. For a class of like 10, yeah, well, obviously now this is a privileged space, but it speaks to segmenting so that we can really focus on those. And then the, the guys who were in the upper classes, they just had a teacher teaching them ga, 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 at a faster pace. You know, and those type of things, the guys at the lowest end got to get looked after. Those guys in the middle also felt, yes, I can. Tina, we just mix masala on Instagram and where now who is in the D sets of life, you constantly feel less than and inadequate when you see guys who are in the A set driving these cars with these girls uh, 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 to a point where you feel defeated. You spoke about jealousy, maybe, but there's also a level of they so far if I'm a stomstomosa in a class and I'm sitting there and just calling Jamachana Namandi and I'm just getting 20%, 20%, and they all just getting 90s, that's going to break my self esteem. I'm going to feel like a fucking clown. Put me in a space with people like me, teach me according to my pace. Hopefully, then I can build from there, then graduate to the next level, then the next level, then the next level. And before you realize it, say, oh, sing Nam, sing Namandi, and That's how I see segmenting. You know, but because I'm a Maybe I'm going through a transition period and I'm just venting. You know, sometimes when I when I look at the ANC that 
a lot of these guys were at the forefront of the struggle. Sure. They were working on the ground. Sure. Speaking in communities, speaking in churches, involved in political debates. Sure. And maybe they, I'll use Cyril as an example. Maybe they actually realized that, you know, black people are not the same. Yeah, early days. And maybe they were like, you know what? This thing of trying to speak to certain people that don't want to listen, trying to conscientize them like Steve B, well, maybe it doesn't work for the majority. So what I'm going to do is first and foremost, when I look at the greatest people in history who have been able to uplift their people, even mm. the Afrikaners in South Africa, number mm. one, it's always going to be an elite small group. Yeah. Could be the British colonizers, Abel mm. Cecil, John Rhodes, Alan Gray, etc. It could be the American pioneers. It could have been Ushaga Zulu for the Zulu kingdom. Mm. It'll always be an elite minority. So maybe sure. Abel Cyril said, we need to become part of the elite minority. Mm. And to do that, you have to align with certain interests. Mm. And to do that, he, I guess with Abo, Harry Oppenheimer mm. and all the, I don't know if it was Harry, it may have been Harry Oppenheimer and other people. They were like, let me get into these circles of mining. Mm. And they set up in Noom, I think, the National Union of Mine Workers. They had their strike. And then later on, they set up BEE so that he could benefit. And then they went and they found like-minded black people. Mm what today we call overnight BEE billionaires, etc. Mm. They were like, we understand what we're doing here. We're going to be an elite minority. We're going to be called names. Yeah. But what we're going to do is we're going to accumulate as many resources as possible for ourselves, number one, because we're already different. Sure. And we've been willing to put in the work and the fight. Mm. If other black people were willing to put in the work and the fight, mm. they deserve the spoils. Sure. They didn't do it. They were at home. Major this is what people don't understand about apartheid when they talk about un unity. It's only very few blacks that actually fought, you know, in mostly just woke up and carried on about their day. Yeah. You know, so the ones who stayed in rural areas carried on living in rural areas. They had access to poisoning or met them, no bass, but they never, you know. So it was only a small part of these it's, guys that liberated us. It's almost like you and Everyone I. Everyone claims it. It's almost like you Fuck. and I criticizing Julius Malema, but yeah. we refuse to get into politics. Sure, that's very And true. then when Julius starts getting tenders and gives them to his family, we're sour. Yeah, we met. And it's like, why didn't you guys join politics and get into parliament and government? Because that's the rule. You're just yeah, sour. That's, that's the game, yeah. But I'm yeah. seeing that you want Julius yeah, you're barking. to just give you tenders because... Yeah, yeah. But he's, he's been called names. He's been chased out of parliament. He's caught uh, mad. Yeah, he's been But he must give you the... Like, yeah. So I, I, I think maybe the guy said that. And look, what happens when you get into an elite circle from what I've seen? Mm. Uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say Rob Hersoff's brought me into this. I mean, Rob comes much later in my life where mm. I've been meeting millionaires and billionaires for over 10, 20 years. Pause. Why are people mad at your relationship with Rob? It's um it's a double-edged sword. So um, Drake says jealousy is love and hate at the same time. Mm. Um, they wish they were me. Mm. Part of it. Mm. The other part is they've been sold this narrative that every time a black person gets close to a well-off white person or a white person that was a beneficiary of apartheid, mm. they are going to be sent to destroy us further. And sadly, there is a portfolio. Nelson Mandela, Cyril Ramaphosa, Tabombegi, these guys that were liberation fighters, or Tokyo mm. Sikhwali, mm. and how people have seen their proximity to white wealth and how today those guys are, are wealthy and they've moved away from black mm. and they've become gatekeepers. Now, I've never put my hand up to say I'm fighting for anyone. Mm. But because they've seen that in the past, it becomes a fear of Gadan Lumfanalo. He's probably going to come through. He's probably going to become very famous. Mm probably going to become very rich mm. and he's going to be the guy that's going to run companies and pretend like he's here for black people and he's leading to our oppression y here's the problem because the Herzog yeah. family were huge beneficiaries of colonization and apartheid okay you, you you're sitting in your cubicle at work working for a white company yeah using the white man's laptop your company laptop opening a little twitter tab and you're typing how much hate panels the sellout yeah you are still expecting Mr. White Man at the end of the month to pay you salary. So you're yeah. working for the white man and the white man is paying for your livelihood. Yeah. Yet you're saying Upenuel is a sellout to Abelung. 
they they believe that the position i'm in is not circumstantial so to to ordinary black people the mindset is i'm only working here cuz i don't have a choice you have a choice to not be friend rob hers off but you intentionally choosing whereas i didn't choose to work here is simo <laughs> that, that's 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 how their brain that, that, processes. That, that that brain is such a broken. That's such a broken mindset. It's it's literally. I'm every part of my financial life is financed. I'm getting Shabenzi pick and pay. Yeah. And something Shabenzi, Tilo, whatever. Yeah. Every part of my financial what's what everything that's in my bank is given to me by Umlum or Ackerman, ne? Because I work for pick and pay. Yeah. Yet I have the audacity to be angry when I see a black child befriending a white child. or in certain spaces with the watch out is 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 that my understanding i'll i'll add something else to what i was explaining earlier as your brand grows if you are dark skinned yeah the black masses by default want to imprison you into a black agenda okay without your choosing that's why to this day when oj simpson oj simpson says i'm not black i'm oj mm. when idris elba says i don't want to be the first black mm. i want to be the first idris Mm, mm. People catch feelings as if yeah they sent Idris Elba to go act sure and they sent OJ S- Simpson ah mm. uh, will fundraise as a black church as a yeah. black community go represent us yeah humble sons when yeah. it was you and your own doing sure we don't know where Patrice came from yeah we don't know his history we don't know how many black people have invested in his greatness mm. but because he happens to be famous rich we feel entitled to whatever he is so when Upenwell becomes something it's like mm. we made him we made you you yeah. owe us Jay-Z, you are you Jay-Z are black lines. Jay-Z lines yeah so uh, so um, what is it um, i heard motherfucker saying they made hope made hope say, say okay, okay so, so make, make another, another hope fact so it's it's one of those things and look it's easy to get caught in because black people really cheer you on when you become successful and it's dope yeah it's dope but in the cheering they feel entitled to you to a point where if i'm going to sit with johan rupert mm. It doesn't matter if I studied at Paul Ruiz Gymnasium mm. like Cameron Pivot and I was mm. the first black head boy. Shout out Cameron. Doesn't matter if I got scholarships from white people, if my best friends were white, mm. if I was speaking Afrikaans my whole life, it doesn't matter. Sure. The fact that I'm black and I'm sitting with Johan Rupert, I need to look him in the eyes and be like, "You white people stole our land. You racist. You must apologize. Yeah. You are racist." Well, yeah. I must now get into a role of pretending that I've been sent for a black agenda when sure. that's not even my rise. Sure, sure, sure. I I made the same mistake with Tusia Kolis, Samtanda Kolis and I I had to apologize to myself because I don't think it got to him. I had to apologize to myself. Tusia Kolis. Don't ask us wait eh. Ekabeha, the Eastern Cape. Played rugby, brilliant rugby player, mm. was scouted uh, by Gray High mm. in Port Elizabeth, brought into the school given the greatest platform, one of the top rugby schools in the country. Mm. Great education, one of the top academic schools in the country mm. and they gave him a platform to become an amazing rugby player a a well nutritioned black man and he today is the captain of the springboks mm. and is amazing and when he was interviewed at panasonic there was a, m- a mischievous question on how do you feel about quotas and mm. what do you think nelson mandela would say which is now johan rupert asking me yeah but penwell Don't you think this land thing is rubbish? Now he's setting me up yeah. to speak on behalf of blacks. Yeah. So that when I answer, yeah. and I say no Mr. Rupert, I think the land issue man it's it's okay we don't he's like oh you see Ben all said. Yeah. That's where now mischievous white people use you. Yeah. But Okolisi was like I don't think Nelson Mandela would like quotas. We don't like quotas because we want to believe we're there on merit and I got angry. Mm. And And after my anger because you wanted him to speak on behalf of the I wanted the him narrative. to speak I wanted him to speak on behalf of black rugby players in this country. Okay. Considering that I'm a black rugby player myself sure. who's experienced the worst racism on the rugby field yeah. off the rugby field. Yeah. Coaches that put you on the bench so that you don't get to shine. Coaches that don't pick you, coaches that don't send you documents that say you must shop to practice so that when they ask, "Where's Penson?" "Oh, mm. no, we don't know." So you don't mm. get selected for the team. uh coaches that play you out of position mm. you're a decision maker you're a scrum mm. off you're a fly half they but they shaft wing. you at wing so yeah. you don't get much ball and you don't get to shine yeah. so that you don't get selected so sure. i wanted him to speak on behalf of black rugby players but siakolis has never asked for that yeah 
He's never said, I speak for black rugby players. I'm a black rugby activist. Like uh, Tando Manana as an example. Mm, mm. Tando Manana is big on that. Sure. You know, um, and I had to pull back and be like, you know what? Siakolis is just an amazing rugby player. Mm. And he's brilliant and he's an amazing human being. And it is not for me to put that on him. Is it not the Spider-Man line? With, with, great, with, with great power comes uh, great responsibility. With great power comes great responsibility. Ukolisi never asked for the responsibility. You must understand, Kolisi never appointed himself as a Springbok captain. Mm. He 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 wanted to play rugby. Sia mm. Kolisi is Peter Steph to toy. But I'm saying, with you, I'm, I'm saying with you, you have the power now. To now, do what? To do good. What is good? Yes, that's what I mean, the black narrative would be good. But how would he know the black narrative? Fair enough. Because he's black? He's meant because he's from it. a township? I need to say that that's that's the always the assumption. You go into a private yeah. school, you go into a private school, you see a black child, and the black child can't speak vernacular. The assumption is that they should, and they should understand the black narrative. I made a video two weeks ago where I was saying, I'm tired of being imprisoned by the poor in South Africa. Yeah. What happens with us middle class, mm. black, white, colored Indian, mm. when we have to go vote? Or when we speak, or when we complain, mm. we do it on behalf of the poor masses. Yeah. But look at high unemployment. Look at people waking up in shacks. Sure. We don't live in shacks. No. We're not unemployed. We're no. fine. Yeah. The poor masses don't care about us. They're and not like, but guys, poor, the poor masses don't think, but guys, you're overtaxing the middle class. Oh shit, got you. They don't think, but guys, the middle class also, their cost of living. Yeah. They don't care. They don't care. They just want the benefits. Yeah. The rich don't care about the middle class. Yeah. They just want to make money. Sure. And they will milk the middle class for money. Mm. And they will take some of that money they've milked, give it to the politicians who they puppeteer mm. to then split the crumbs with the poor. Sure. We are imprisoned in our thinking. I'm, I'm saying this because it goes back to the segmenting black people. Sure, sure, sure. And it's not just segmenting black people. I'm using black people because I know it's triggering. It's segmenting all South Africans. Because sure. at some point you realize me and the white guy, Jonathan, and the white girl, Mary, are actually similar. Yeah. Versus Johan and this black guy, with I, him, I, are I the might, same. I might have more in common with Jonathan. Way than, more in common. Than I have with the Mangob. Way more in common. Yeah. Now, what happens with being imprisoned about the great, with great power comes great responsibility is you feel like it is your place to fight and speak for. Mm. Now, part of the segmenting argument is this. We have different roles to play. Mm. If you are in the middle class, your role is to work as hard as you can because you have a privilege to work, mm. to make as much money as you can, mm -hmm. to move out of the middle class into the rich. Yeah. And in that, you're going to pay a lot of tax. Sure. The responsibility of the rich is to make sure that they create jobs and they create enabling environments so that society is functioning well. Mm. The rich people in this country have the most power is it to actually create is it their a great country. Is it their responsibility? Why, why would you say, if I find myself in a top level, why yeah. is it my responsibility to create jobs? Be because if you run ShopRite, yeah. but let me put it this way. At, at each level, you're meant to act selfishly, mm -hmm. which is what people don't understand. Sure. And this is why I, I, I've said with new money is not trained. Sure. Selfishly for the rich guy, it is you, in your best interests to grow your business to as big as it can grow. Mm, mm. And part of that is ensuring that infrastructure works mm. so that your trucks are not crashing on the road because of mm -hmm. potholes. Mm -hmm. Part of that is that you have electricity so mm -hmm. that your businesses function in the cheapest electricity. Mm -hmm. Part of it is so that as many people as possible have jobs so that they can fucking afford whatever you're selling. Mm. And part of it is that there aren't so many poor, desperate people that they're fucking stealing from you mm. and killing your family. You have to act selfishly. So that's how it becomes your responsibility. I think of the unions back in um, in New York. You know, when you think about the, the mafia and how they control the union. Yeah. And we speak trade, about- Trade unions, labor, the, yeah, labor groups. The, yeah, the labor unions. And we speak a lot about AI and how, if you look at like McDonald's and Steers with the self-help, you know. Then I start thinking of a person like Christo Visa, yeah? Christo Visa, how many, how many human beings does he employ or does his company? Over 100,000. It's crazy if you think about that. He's got control. So whether you think of checkers. Those are shop, people, not, not, not people he influences because yes, they're families. Yes. So when you think checkers, ShopRite, Pep, 
Yeah, but uh, as his three, not, what? Check his shop right, Pep. As his three main dollars. He's got a stake in Capitec. He's got a stake in Capitec. But let's just limit it to those three. Sure. How many people, like, is that? Are you kidding to that's, that's... Do you know how much time we have, Gift? No, please tell me how much time we have left. Like, how much time you, you have? All day. Okay, thanks, bro. No, please keep going. I yeah, like try it's, and sort out my it's, internet. It's crazy. So, so it goes back to that whole how the mafia controlled certain narratives. Yeah, but because they'd say, look, we've got a trade union of, let's say, when I give us, you own um, a certain company, and we, as the union, we control all that, um, all those employees. Think about that. Shoprite if, on its own has got one hundred fifty-two thousand. Hundred and fifty-two. It includes 000. checkers. Please carry on. You're speaking to give. So again, if you don't listen to what we say, if you're not saying, okay, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, or we're going to give you a kickback, we're going on strike. Imagine if Christo Visa said, his staff, his staff are striking for the next two weeks. No checkers, no shop right, no pep. So a pep core, which is the holding company, owns yeah. pep, Ackermans, Dance, Incredible Connection, Shoe City, Refinery, Tacky Town, Bradlow's, yes. Yuko. They have close to 50,000 employees. Oh, gosh. That's Crystal Visa. That's now we're over 200,000. 200, yeah, we're over 200,000. Yeah. But like, Wait, it's FinTech operations provide financial and telecommunication services to customers in the formal and informal markets. It's Flash business. So if Flash is under Pepco, it's uh, my, my, my spaza shop. Yeah, yeah. It's Flash Business supports 200,000 small, small business, business traders. So again, you've got one man that has so much financial influence, so much power, you know, controlling this narrative. So Christo understands the responsibility. That's the one thing I'll is, say about him. My, my thing is, is it responsibility or is it a mafia move? Or is it both? Because I now know, Guti, within my control, yeah. I mean, I'm control Abantu, that let's just say 200,000. Yeah. Within my control. Bezwa, ngami, essentially. You know. Is it, oh, I'm responsible for 200,000 uh, 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 bad money households. households. Or is it, I've got this power move. And if you have, if you governments have a problem, I close the tap. And if I close the tap, it, the, 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 the knock-on effect from that. So we've never heard that Christo Visa bullies anyone. Yeah. So... If we were to argue that it's a it's a conspiracy theory, because sure. himself, Raymond Ackerman at, at Pick and Pay, mm. I've heard rumors. It wasn't Crystal Visa, it was Whitey Person at ShopRite, who was the CEO. Apparently, they used to bully suppliers mm. to 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 buy at the cheapest, mm. which then becomes a mafia type of move. Mm, mm, that mm, mm. because thirty percent of your milk clover comes mm. through my doors, mm. you can't sell to me at this price. Because if I decide. I'm not gonna buy from Clover. I'll buy from Dew Fresh mm. or whoever. Yeah, you're you're fucked. So Copper. you have to give me like less fifty cents or whatever the case yeah. may be. But in terms of government, I I don't know. I I love white Afrikaans people very much, and I get mm. dragged for this a lot. And I understand white Afrikaans people generally are regarded as being responsible for apartheid and the worst forms of oppression in this country for black people. Mm. So I fully understand that, and I'll never take that away. Mm. But when I look at how white people pull themselves up from just being farmers to building industry, they built industry. They mm. built ShopRite, uh, Pepco, mm. um, APSA, which was false cast. They've built multi-choice DSTV, mm. um, Sanlam, mm. um, Afkri, some of the biggest companies in this country mm. and some of them even in the world, mm. Naspers. Mm. Um, they built those things. It's they amazing. built them. It's they built them of black exploited black labor. We can't deny that. Mm. But they built them, which is what is important. It's amazing how people who work for those industries come at you and you say, "You, there's, you appreciate some Africans people for having certain things." So it's it's. I, the, I, I, it just it just shocks. It's like fucking hell, boy. You work for Lamapunu. He says thank you because I like and relate to certain things. Then you get touched. So they built that and then outside of building those industries, they eventually took over government through the National Party, which is how it's supposed to be done. It's a takeover. Mm. And in taking over, Afrikaans people wanted to build South Africa into one of the best economies in the world. Mm. 
yes, they were going to exploit black labor. Best believe, no doubt. Mm. But outside of exploited labor, because there's a, a capitalist theory I have, which everyone, not everyone, a lot of people disagree with me on, and it's, it's okay. Mm. You cannot build a first world economy without slave labor. Yeah. You can try Impossible. your best. You can try your best Impossible. to argue that to me, and I won't believe you because America was built with slavery. Um, South Africa was built with the oppression of black people, and mm. the British colonizers brought in Indians to mm. Durban, and they brought in Malays into the Western Cape. Mm. Uh, if you look at Europe and how it's plundered under nations, then you look at Asia, China in particular. They didn't import slaves; mm. they enslaved their own people. That's when the term sweatshops. And all those kind of things came in. The, the atrocities of labor in China. Look at Vietnam. Dubai. Look at Dubai. People aren't speaking about Dubai. Yeah. You know. And uh, there, Qatar, Qatar with the you know Qatar with the World Cup. If you guys go and research, there were a lot of slaves that were working to build the stadium. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. So so like those things, we oh my god. But like there's real slaves, like real ass slaves that yeah. all or, or just let's call it those, exploited labor. You know, because maybe slave is like, oh, the person can't move. You're like, no, the person can move, but uh, if they don't, some, if in, they don't in, work for peanuts, they won't eat. So that yeah. almost enslaves you. Well, in some of these places, it's literal slaves. In in yeah. some of the, I think yeah, the, well. I think we currently have three million formal slaves in the world. You can go check it out on Google. Yeah. Some of them are in Africa. <laughs> Funny enough. Yeah. Um, so. so they 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 every first world every first world economy has been built off exploited labor. We can debate that on another day. Outside of the exploited labor, which is the oppression of black people, mm. Afrikaners realized the importance of building infrastructure, having our own fuel. And that's how they gave birth to Sasol. Having our own electricity, so we don't have to import electricity, and they built ESCOM. Having our own telecommunications infrastructure, and they built Telcom. Having our own steel refinery spaces, and they built ESCO. Afrikaans people were trying to build South Africa into a first world economy, Transnet, our trains, mm. and everything else. And then I was saying, I, I appreciate white Afrikaners. I wanted to go back to Christo Visa, and you were asking if he's responsible or it's a mafia. Mm. I think even today, when you look at Orania and you look at Afri Forum, oh, and they also built their own schools. Mm. Best schools. Some of the best schools in the mm. country. In the world. Sadly, the ANC government has failed to even show an attempt to build industry, mm. to, we've destroyed the trains, Transnet is fucked, we've just destroyed the post office, the post office is fucked, we've destroyed our weapons manufacturing, which is Danel, mm. Danel is fucked, um, we've destroyed our airline, South African Airways, we're fucked, mm. we're destroying ESCOM, actually we've destroyed ESCOM, ESCOM's gone, we're fucked, we sold ESCO, to metal, um, they're doing the opposite of building. They are destroying. Mm. So I appreciate white Afrikaners because they realize we have to build this nation. In Orania, their flag has got a picture of a little boy who's rolling his sleeve up because they believe in this thing of a Purmaka plan and that mm. you have to roll your sleeves up and work. And work. And if you've ever spent time with Afrikaans people, especially the farmers, they believe very much in hard work. Of course, they believe in God and being Christian and getting married, but they believe in hard work and we've lost this thing. But there is a group of black people, a segment of black people that has the exact same values mm. of hard work and building mm. and industry. Mm. And now they are forced to push a black agenda of we want the land. We want the land. You stole the land. Mm. Uh, and you're like, some of us just want to work. Now, if you were to segment black people, you have these different role players. The poor will be the poor. And for me, this now becomes a Twitter conversation. And this is what I was saying about maybe I'm transitioning. Patrice Mutsipe, Cyril Ramaphosa, some of the wealthiest black people I know in this country, they never speak to the poor. Mm. And I never understood why. One of them was like, but speak to them so you can inspire them. Going back to my ANC example, I think at some point they realized, don't speak to the masses because... The masses will always be sort of stupid, sort of ignorant. They won't get it and they'll kind of destroy and dismantle us. With the Afrikaners, with the Bruder Bond, they realize we've got an elite group, a secret society, and we will lead. Mm. I said to Zimasa Vabaza, Mustafa, mm. Mm. who was saying we need a ruling class in South Africa, not politicians, but we need a crop of elite people. It doesn't have to be black, mm. but the smartest, most intelligent, most innovative people who are going to sit down and be like, 
don't post this on Twitter. They won't get it. They'll bash you. Come to our elite club. Join us. We'll give you all the resources. Mm. Sit with Rob Hussle. Mm. Sit with Johan Rupert. Mm. Sit, with, sit with Nikki Oppenheimer. Mm. Sit with Patrice Mutipe. Sit with Brice Matawate. Sit with Saki Mark Ozoma. Sit mm. with these people. Sit with the Vivian Reddy. All these guys. Sit with them and be like, guys, this is my plan for the country. Mm. Let them fund you and then go out and, and build amazing schools or not even school skills development centers and and challenge South Africa to be a first world economy where we are actually competing with China and the US and Germany and Japan. Mm. And the masses later on, like the Zulus, the tribes that were conquered, who today beat their chairs, hey, but I'm not Zulu. Yeah, You're like, yeah, yeah. Zulu because you are conquered yeah. and consolidated into, they will appreciate you later. Mm. Black South Africans, when they're celebrating the Springboks, forget about the Springboks is still like a white Afrikaner institution. Mm. And that you need a, a Peter Steff Dutoy and a Dwayne from Yerlin and a Andre Pollard mm. and a Vili LaRue. You need those people to win you. They're just mm. celebrating with the Springboks. And you're like, don't explain to them. Mm. Don't let Dwayne from Yerlin explain, we understand that the black people don't. They're going to bash you. They're going to attack you. Get on the field and play. Mm. We'll manage the rest. Yeah. So maybe I'm in, I'm in a transition period where I'm moving from activist Stephen Bantubigo Krasani and I'm going into the Cyril Patrice where now maybe I'm going to get closer to money and begin not speaking to the masses and they will only see the systems we build. Mm. Shanduga employs people. Mm. Yes, Cyril. Uh, African Rainbow Minerals, African Rainbow Capital, yeah, Patrice, hires people. Mm. Someone will be like, which company have you pulled? Who do you hire? And I'm like, I'm trying to wake you guys up. Like, mm. don't wake them up. Don't wake them up. Get with the people and start working. Don't and save them. They don't want to be saved. That's, That's Jay Cole, boy. That's their goal. Don't, sa don't save them. Don't save them. They um, don't want to be saved. But from the complaint of tweets, but from the And then once you've built the systems or you've you've joined, Christo Visa's my mate, Nikki Oppenheimer and his son, I think it's Jonathan. They're my mates. Mm. We're there. And we're sending all the time. Mm. No one to bishops and St. John's and mm. Michael House and Hilton, mm. and we're there. Mm. Because we're like, we, we, we left the masses because we realized there was a disconnect. Sure. And even when you try to explain, go join Afri Forum, mm. stop speaking about it. When you get to Afri Forum, go find out how Soul Tech works with bursaries and go get as many black, colored Indian kids into Soul Tech. Teach them Afrikaans. Mm. Go get them jobs and get them to make money. Mm. Later on, we'll market. Thanks to Penwell, who's joined Afri Forum, we've managed to create 5,000 skills mm. workers and they're now working and feeding their families. Mm. And whoever wants to criticize they, from the outside, I don't engage them. Mm. I'm not like, but guys, you also speak English. It's English, it's Afrikaans. Why is English? Don't explain mm. to the slow class. But because I, they'll I, never I, get it. You, you do that. And then later on, I'll transcend into self-actualization where I become Nelson Mandela. Oh my God. And I, tran I transcend into this thing where I become a global icon. And I speak about, if you look at what we did in South Africa, we took the British colonial systems. We sat with the white Afrikaners. We brought in the small community of Jews. Sure. We brought in the Arab Indian Muslims. Sure. And, and the best parts of black people, the best parts of colors. And we sat together and we devised the strategy to win and we realized we need to segment and we told the middle class focus on work forget the poor yeah, yeah. we'll sort out the yeah, poor we'll, we'll sort that yeah we'll feed them and create focus on your work and all of you in the middle class must focus on moving to the rich class because mm. when you're in the rich class there's going to be another level of responsibility mm. all the poor we will make sure that you eat and you're fine but you must all be focusing on getting into the working class because mm, mm, mm. we're trying to get all of you to just work and then we'll have this leadership this elite leadership, Freemason, Illuminati, mm. whatever, that runs South Africa with our Bill Gates and where we sit to them and we're like, we want to put South Africa first and you guys must make sure South Africa wins because then we get to ignite the rest of the African continent. So that, so and the you, people are you, say, you say that doesn't exist right now. I'm saying in the way that I would like it to be, it doesn't exist. And because of what we were saying about when you're a black person in a space, you're forced into this monolith. Mm. Of if you're black, you can't say, I'm not allowed to say anything nice about white people. Mm, mm. I'm not allowed to say anything nice about Afrikaans people. Mm, mm. When a black person makes a mistake or is corrupt, I have to say, no, it's because of apartheid. Mm. 
when someone steals something, I must, ah, but you know, it's what I must, I must lie. Mm. And then when it comes to the land, I must sing the same song of our land was stolen instead of saying we were conquered. But now what you need to do as a black person depends on the segment. If you're middle class, how you get the land back is you buy it, get mm. a bond. Mm. Why would I buy? St- no, 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 no. Forget all of that fucking noise. You are middle class, you have money. Like the next white person who wants land, get you will a get a bond. Yeah. If you are part of the rich class, you will get land like this. If you're part of the poor class, go go lease or go stay on Pinson's land mm. in exchange for labor or whatever. But in mm. one way or another, you are, have land. And if you're working Pinson's land, Pinson must give you more and more land to work and, and afford you the opportunity to earn your keep. Mm-hmm. Eventually, he must be like, Tabo, thank you so much for the years of service. I would like to hand over give this title bit, deed yeah. for this 10 hectares. You, mm. You've earned it. And mm. we just do things more intelligently. Mm. Is, uh, we do have Does, classes. In, in, we India, have classes. In, India has that. The case, I think it's called the case no, class cost, system. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's it's very very formalized. Yeah, but, and I want buyers with I mean this cost. That, like, that's that's what I want. It's not a if but or coconuts. You know, I'm not. You know, you know, we say stay in your lane. When they formalize that lane, sure. And they say, what are you doing in this lane? Go back there. What are you doing in this lane? Go we, back. We there. were exposed as a to family. You guys have to work in this lane. Yeah, we were we were we were spoiled. I'm I'm calling it spoiled and privileged to be exposed to one of the greatest systems we have in this country, which is the rugby systems. Mm. The rugby system starts with Biliki's rugby, mm. I think at under nine level. No, way before that. Like under, before four, under, under four, under five, yeah. Under four, under five, yeah. geez. And then from there, you, the, the boys start getting taught how to play rugby, the basics, mm. the running and the passing and the rules. And to a point where it peaks at under 12, under 13 with mm. Craven Week, mm. which is now already formalized. The boys get kit, they travel, they get to meet other boys. Mm. And then from there, something crazy happens that I think the majority of South Africans don't know, where boys are given scholarships and bursaries to some of the best schools. Fair. So from a young age, you understand that you can earn your way into a better life. Sure. Even though you come from poverty, yeah. you can go to the best school, sure. one of the best schools in the country. Mm. And then they play rugby and they get formalized in high school. Then there's under 16 Grand Home mm. week. Mm. And then from there, some of the boys still get selected uh, or, or get scholarships and bursaries into schools all the way up until Craven Week. Mm. Which and is then under 18. Under 18. And then yeah. after Craven Week, now, thanks to Francois Pinard and the guys at Varsity Sports, you've got Varsity Cup. Before that, it was just club rugby, but you've got Varsity Cup with all the Varsities. Mm. And then it goes up to, which I don't watch rugby anymore, but you'd have your, your Curry Cup, uh, you'd have the Super Rugby, you'd have the Springboks. It was mm. it was this, this chain. Yeah. If even before Curry Cup got the Gold Cup, so ah, there's, there's always steps. There's, there's a there's a there's a, a journey. Proper, there's a path. Yeah. Now, based on age and ability, you can see where you kind of fit. Sure. And you're comfortable. Sure. No one is shocked. Yeah. Why are you playing here? Mm. You're like, oh no, it's because of these reasons mm. that we all understand and we're aware of. Yeah. You know, you should be a Springbok, and then you get angry. Yeah, I want to be a Springbok. We deserve no. No. There's a there's a way. Mm. We're not gonna say it's perfect. There's racism. There's politics. It's fine. But mm. there is a a way. Our soccer is not that direct as an example. Mm. If you were to have that in society where mm. people know if I'm super talented as a matriculant, I can jump levels as Andre mm. Pollard or mm. Francis mm. Stein. Mm. But generally, this is the path. Mm. And also, if I'm not that talented, this is as far as I'm going to go and I'm happy. Mm. Mm. And if I'm 32 and I'm playing but, at this level and but, there's a 19-year-old that's a springboard, I fine. understand. And, and you segment it because even when you do get to club rugby and you're 25... There's first team, second team, third team, fourth team. Yeah, but and you know, I'm still part of the mix. You know, I'm not left there floundering. I'm still part of the mix. I've just been segmented. I played a game today. <laughs> I played uh, for Pirates. Uh, played for the Pirates Rugby Club yeah. in Greenside. In Greenside, but I played dog. Played for the oldies, so it's 35 and above. <laughs> but That's again, just we're getting old. But it speaks to the system. You know, it speaks to Tina. It gets to a point where we give up. Hang your boots. Uh. Uh-uh. These guys are saying, look, I want to stay in the system. So now when you look at the chairperson, when you look at the decision makers, when you look at, they still in the system. So you've got guys in their forties, in their fifties, still playing, still part of the system, yeah. still giving back. Yeah, one Because they've, a lot of them have been there playing from under 19. A lot of them played when it was juniors playing Pirates under 13. Now Amjita is 45, whatever the case may be, still there. You know, so now, now his kids are playing under 13. Yeah, but, and he might have played under 13F 
And because he's been in a system, maybe his kids are a little bit better. His kids are playing in the bees, whatever the case may be. See, now we don't understand that. We don't understand that patience and we don't understand what is move around and I've said I've said something controversial, which is I don't think black people in South Africa were colonized properly or fully. Okay. I think our colonizers failed in some degree because the whole point of colonization is assimilation. Mm. The smaller tribes that Osha are consolidated don't regard themselves as smaller tribes today. And they are not seen as second class Zulus. Mm. We are all one Zulu nation. Mm. What was meant to happen with colonization is all of us, Jamaica, South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, the indigenous people, we're all meant to carry ourselves as British folk. Mm. We should love having high tea. We should be watching the coronation today. We should be watching the coronation. Mm. Um, I say this because there's aspects of being a black person where we still slip back into our old way of mm. being and we weren't taught the etiquette. I'm saying this because you're speaking about sports clubs. Mm. There's old boys clubs at schools. Mm. There are these associations. And mm. I've always thought, why and are we black... speak the colonizers language. Yeah, yeah. Why, why, why are yeah. these things not taught at school? Why are you not taught things like the littering and the adding value to the country and the... Because that is how at least they would have colonized fully. And that's how South Africa would function like Britain. Mm. And then you don't have to deal with black people who are complaining and mm. it would work. Because Canada was colonized fully, in my opinion. Fully. And you Australia know. generally, outside so. of some of the Aborigines. But yeah. uh, they're thinking like um, when, when, when you read uh, o, o, o France Fanon, uh, Black Skin, uh, White Masks, he speaks about in his native country, how everyone aspired to be French. You know, from where, whether the ladies were bleaching their skins, dyeing their hairs, the, the accent. They didn't just want to have, they, they didn't just want to speak French. They wanted to speak it as if they come from mainland yeah. France, yeah. you know, and everyone assimilated to a point. And I think for us, Jobushu, we weren't colonized fully. Yes, many blacks want to be as white as possible. We to be as white as possible. We speak with an accent. We eat their food, prawns, and whatever the case is. But Jobushi Ilguti, we're hopping in and out, you know, because still Safunu Glochola, still Safunu Glochola, still Safuna Ugozanilzozi, still Abandbasa Tumela Nangezu. You know, so those type of things of bouncing in and out. Yeah, if it was so done, it's a if, form of schizophrenia if, and split personality. Yeah, if, if, if it was if it was done fully, if it was done fully, then because because you and I have assimilated a lot. Yeah, no, a lot. Most there's, of our lives, there's, there's very little in our lives that is black. I listen to the hypocrisy that people talk about around them being black, and you understand. It's all about Jesus, white Jesus. This lives in white neighborhoods. Jobang Shilo weaves, straightens their hair, lemon lighty. As white as can be, yeah. Gabon yet is going to come and talk about in Ganzaki, don't know a speck of any vernacular, nothing, but that person's gonna talk about blackness. And I'm like, how what is blackness? What, what, what is blackness? How do you see blackness now? Because every part of your life, from when you wake up, you're just a dark-skinned Englishman. But you try not to, because I'm going to forget I'm in the moonlight, ne, ne ponds, ne, Jeez, ne. you're also trying to be a light skin. You, you, you're trying to be, you're trying to get as white as possible. You see our sisters trying to get as white as possible. Their hair, as white as possible. So you're doing everything. You're shopping in the, the same shops that are belong. You want to wear their names on your clothes, whether his name is, or whether it's, it's Dolce & Gabbana, whether it's Gucci. You want to wear their names. Every part of you. You want to play their golf. You want to play their rugby. You want to... Uh, drink their prime. You want to do everything that they do. And then you're going to tell me about blackness. What, what is blackness to you? You know, are you, are you not sad that we have forsaken our older ways of being and living? I think we don't know what that is. And I think whenever I, I, we have those, I can give you an idea. Uh, my manager, two seconds. I think when certain people talk, they'll think and they'll talk about 200 years ago. And I, I, a lot of it, in my opinion, has been romanticized. Mm. You know, um, I was listening to a, a friend of mine talking about the black civilization and how we were these kings and how we, oh, you know, we Timbuk, kings and queens. Timbuktu. And I was like, everything you're telling me, you read from white textbooks, you know? So essentially, Upoja, your form of blackness as told by whites. We don't, what truth is there, you know? So if I go into a, in a Chinese area and I talk about Asian history and that's all they have is me, 
how much of it is a lie? How much of it is a truth? Angas, but it's based off a black person. So I look at this. So when people say we've lost our ways as blacks, I'm like, who taught you what blacks' ways were? You know, did you learn it from Ukoko or Mkulu, whatever, who you're sitting with? Or did you read it off white textbooks where the narrative might be spun in a certain way? Are you not sad? We, we, we dress like Europeans. We speak English. Yeah. We live in European-styled homes. Yeah. We send our kids to what we call white English schools. I'm not sad because I, I don't know better. But we've been exposed a little bit, you and I in particular. We used to slaughter when we were young. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that's true. Yeah, one. So what happens with society, in my opinion, is that society is just geared, well, the, the top part of it is geared to make life as easy as possible. You know, so there's certain things that I can't be said. School is land a man's and full in my quat. So that so land the man's and full in. Why why would I be said, oh, I want to go back to your, your commands and fully in. I don't want to do that. I but want to maybe there's tap. principles that we missed there. Okay, sharp. The principles will be learned in other spaces, you know. So I don't need to. Excuse me. You'll um, go hiking instead of fetching water. Yeah, I can do that. And then watch nature. So I, I'm saying with the humanity is geared around just make the reason why AI is where it is, because humanity is geared at trying to make things easier. So from us going from hunters to hunter gatherers to farmers, it was all a transition in making life easier. You know, so must come more shaga. They were hunters into into farmers. Mm. Ne? So why didn't they uh how easy life or as we go to or coco bo coco weapons and become hunters? Yeah, why why mel is full ye? Why mel is full ye? Oh Animal, shaga. animals should live yeah, well, free and now, we should yes, catch them. And we, uh, now they're living in crawl and what's this thing? Uh, it, uh, it crawls and what's what he is by this. And they're living with... No, don't do that. Don't, go, don't plant. Don't, just go pick no, from just the trees. Pick, yeah. Yeah, bueno, so it's all about progression. So even if you look at the... So you believe this European way of living is progression? I believe Wuti, it is progression. Because the European way is not just purely European. I need a lot of it was taken, whether it is... A lot of it is Chinese culture, also brought in ink, yeah. uh, those type of gunpowder. So a lot of it is picking up from different cultures. You know, uh, if you read about Ama, Amapunu, how they survived uh, the Northern Cape and all these things, they say they learned a lot of lessons from the Khoisans on how to mm. hunt. So it's all about picking the best from everyone and then moving forward. So I, I, I believe in that, yeah. Do you wish more black people assimilated to whiteness and being European? So ag again, I, I, I wouldn't categorize as whiteness as European, but let's say for the sake of that argument, yes. Then then I would agree with it. I mean, I was looking at it to go to taking the best from all the cultures and all the walks. I think that's what's happened. And again, now you've got these guys who went around. Mm. The Europeans went around and they went to China and they got to pick up ink and they got to pick up gunpowder. They went there. We did it. They did. Mm. So they came and they took the best of that and they took the best of this and they went to, to, to Egypt and they took the best of that and they went to, 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 to the Iran and whatever, Persia, you know, and they took the best of that. So again, when we say we need to aspire to this European life, mm. The European life, in my opinion, is an accumulation of all these things from different cultures that they've picked up. Do you wish more Black South Africans lived like you in the suburbs and spoke better English? Like me? Mm. Who, who's who's, who's going to wash my clothes? How? You can't say that. You who's, cannot say that. Who's going to pour That is inappropriate. Who's going to pour petrol in my car? Huh? No? I, I'm going to hear... That, that's my problem that we have. No? We we want to aspire to soft life. We want to say, oh, okay, I want to have prawns. Someone has to make them. Someone someone has to slave in the kitchen and do that. We we all say we all say we want to be we want to drive a motor laser map PM one. But you still need petrol attendants. So again, why would I then aspire? Would say, I want everybody to be fit and when we play today, I want everybody to score tries. Then who must win? No one must win. You ha you're happy with the hierarchy. And yes. being at the top and other I, people being I, at the bottom. I truly believe so based but, on, but you realize that based on the, your the, jumping ability, the elite have you, always forcefully created barriers from other people that, moving that, up. That, that, that's always how it's been. So going back to all Shagana and that you to create it, that is to create a homestead, they used to put a fence around. Mm. Yeah, well, even their crawl with their cows, they put a fence around. They weren't just saying, well, let's open up for everybody. You know, there's a reason why there was a fence around. Even if you watch these old uh, English movies with castles, there's a whole fence around or there's a moat around it. Because again, we're trying to keep what we've uh, built. You so believe in that? I'm not mad because it's based off your power. 
So if you go and you go and you start picking up acorns mm. for the winter and you pick up 50 acorns, mm. ne? I'm mad because you've taken the acorns and you put them in the safe? No, I mean, my question is uh, the elite have created systems and, and barriers so that yeah. they're the only ones that can grow acorns. Because they're the ones that planted the trees. No, maybe they didn't. They could have colonized and taken the trees. And now I'll use a practical example. Okay. Uh, Monsanto is another company. Sure. They are monopolizing seeds to mm. a point where you can't just freely yeah. plant for yourself. Yeah. I'm saying this because you've got a hierarchy system. And sure. yes, let's say human beings live in the animal kingdom sure. jungle. Yeah. The guy who's a fuel attendant mm. pouring petrol in your nice Rolls Royce. Mm. We like the idea that if he puts in the effort, mm. he can have a Rolls Royce. Sure. But the elite have put in barriers so that mm. even if he has the ability, he cannot. And I'm asking mm. if you support that. I'm saying that is natural. Do you support that? Yeah, it has to be. It, so it, you're not sour it, that there are certain I, people no, that keep you out? No, no. And, and my job is to, if I can't get through the front door, go through the window. It's always been that. You know, mm. if I'm a, um, a leopard, there's barriers because the monkeys are up the trees and I need to figure out a way. It's part of it's part of this. If I'm playing a game, mm. the guy's job is to stop me. He'll put barriers somehow. Mm. You know, that's why even when there's an away fixture and a home fixture and you have home advantage, there's all those barriers on a smaller level that is making things harder for you. And part of the process is for you to overcome them. Do you, you know? support this? Yes, because that's how that's how I know what can you be part of this or not. But you because realize there are I, people that if I just open the door, that one. Mm. So Again, if we are, uh, we had spoken about this earlier in, uh, in uh, what we were talking about. I forgot it. But if it's just a mixed masala of things, you know, mm -hmm. then it's it's clear and obvious which it won't work. If we take the Springbok example and we say anyone that wants to play, we just randomly pick people on the, in the stadium, randomly, we just put them on the field. That won't work. So the barriers that have been formed, whether it's barrier for physicality, ability, um, systematic, whatever the barriers are, have ensured which the guys that are on the field are essentially, at the mo for the most part, the most equipped guys that can handle not just the physical part of the game, mm. but also handle the scrutiny from a political point, from a systems point, can handle everything off the field as well. Do you believe the people that fought for us to have the abilities yeah. to be able to move up were stupid then? Because they actually had the thought that I want to create a platform where the fuel attendant can own a Rolls Royce and they no, sacrificed and died. I think it goes back to the Crystal Visa thing that we spoke about. Uguti, they were also protecting themselves because they understood Uguti, if we make the barriers too much, then these guys, then but they'll get aggressive. So let's throw some crumbs along the way. I think we've gotten to a point where the barriers are getting tighter and tighter and tighter and society will get more and more frustrated. Mm. If you loosen them, if you loosen them a little bit more, I think then it 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 gives you a motivator to get to that next level. Do you support the idea of black people doing to white people what white people did to them? If, if they, they can want to dominate, <laughs> they must try. Do you support that? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, in, in any space, it will always be the the hungriest lion that dominates the others. Yeah, one. So it's one thing to say, "Woody, black people must dominate white people." It's mm. it's you can say it all day. It's like saying, "Yeah, the Springboks." I support the Springboks to beat the All Blacks. Do it. If you can, do. The reason why we haven't done it is not because people don't want to do it. Mm. It's because people know they can't do it. Yeah, one. So they're going around feeling as if, yeah, it's in our Blacks, we must also do apartheid. You must, when's it? When's it? You know, a wazi. Do you then shut do you the believe fuck up. Do you believe you're a leader? Me? Mm. I, I didn't, uh, growing up, I, 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 I didn't know what I was a leader. And I think leadership is something that we were thrown in, even when you didn't want to, you know, whether it is social spaces, some people, guys just playing soccer, whatever the case is, or it's in work, you find yourself being forced, you know, so those things, even if I said, no, I'm not a leader. I think just based on the, the people that look up to me and rely on me to do so many things, they are telling me what I'm a leader, you know. At, at which point are you going to put your hand up to get involved in running this country? I think when I'm brave enough, when I'm strong enough, because again, there's so many barriers that I'm not strong enough to jump over. Are you ready? No. To start the journey? That's the journey that I'm on though. Yeah, would, would you want to serve in parliament? For me? Hmm. 
right now? Whenever you feel ready. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm definitely going to get to that point, uh, without a doubt. Without and a doubt, you're going to serve in parliament? Without a doubt, I will be put in a space where the masses will follow. It's a kazini. It happens automatically. So it will sound arrogant to Abanta Balelela or Abangangaz, but Abangaz, you will know, Guti, this guy, there's an energy about him. And when he's amongst men, men can sense that. And they say, okay, no shop. In certain spaces, Pensin must lead us. I think we can shut it down. Because I know we'll start going around in circles, but. I probably have to develop this theory in my head. We spoke on one topic. Se- segmenting, yeah. Did Se- we say when I speak? We had like six, seven topics. One, this topic is important enough. It's fundamentally important because I realize, like me, there are so many, especially black kids out there who feel kind of lost. Yeah. And when they listen to Julia Smalema, when they listen to Cyril Ramaphosa, when they listen to Herman Mashal, when they listen to Kate and McKenzie, some of them are confused and don't know where to go. Yeah. We speak about blacks today, but to be honest, this applies to so many races. Mm. There are white kids mm. that want to follow certain leaders, but they're scared because they're white. And they're like, maybe this is wrong. I don't know. So segmenting blacks is the one, but more than anything, I just want to segment people. And maybe ultimately, maybe ultimately what's going to happen with me is I'm going to turn penalism into like a Jewish community and be mm. like, you know what? Forget the whole country and the whole nation. Mm. Let me pull this small elite group and we're going to sell to everyone and we're going to own all their land and we're going to dictate policies and it will just be us and there'll be a, a very, very strict criteria to join. Mm. Like, and that'll be good enough. Because mm. you look at, we don't, Muslims don't have to chase a leader because when they've got a leader within their religion mm. and everything is prescribed and said, okay, this is how we're going to do things. Yeah. And it makes it easier for them in terms of understanding Ulai and Wutu Wupi. See now? Okay. We've been chatting for long, man. We can know. discuss other things. Oops. Uh, in my... Thinking of transgenders, Miss South Africa. Yo, I know we'll that's a topic on another time. Yeah, yeah. Guys, thank you very much for joining us. We'll catch up with you guys again soon. Pen and pen. Pen and pen.